What's up? Here we are. We got this episode, and then next week is the season finale. And then, well, it's weird to call it the season finale because there is one more episode afterwards where we're going to be uh, a little bit of a bonus episode. Um, we hadn't planned on it, and then uh, we just really decided we wanted to squeeze this guy in um, before we close it out. So there it is. It's coming up. It's coming up. We're almost almost ready to wrap up season one. And um, it's been a hell of a ride so far. Did you turn the thing on? Okay, cool. Cool, cool. I was just double checking. Double checking. Anyways, so welcome. Welcome to Talking Scared. Um, what's up, Nick? Nice to see you hanging out with us for a little bit this evening while we're talking about Nick and while we're waiting for a few more people to get in here. Um, number one, tonight's episode of Talking Scared will be with Ron. He is on point. He's ready. He's ready to roll. Oh, I am so impressed. That is so impressive. I have to give you a round of applause. You oh my been. God, that was the smoothest transition yeah. ever in the history of Haunted Honeymooners. Thank yes. you. Yes, welcome, Ron. Can you hear us? Awesome. Yeah, well, absolutely. Again, congratulations on having the smoothest transition into our live feed um, in history. You killed it. You absolutely killed it. He was there. He was ready. Just uh, well done. We're gonna. We might have to have him teach classes. I know. It was so good. So thank you and welcome, man. Welcome. What a privilege to have you on tonight. Um, you have been in the home industry for hey, thanks. 17 plus years now, right? Very yeah, 17 cool. years. Cool. Um, yep. We're going to get into absolutely everything to do about you. We're going to dive into um, a good bit. Um, you're also a police officer currently right now as well? Yeah, I have been for 27 years. years. Very, very cool. Um, so before we get into all that, we always like to start the very, very beginning of things. What was it originally? They got Ron into horror. Well, to be honest with you, it was uh, probably movies when I was a uh, teenager. Because to be honest with you, what happened when I was five or six, about five or six years old, uh, my aunt took me to a, a haunted house, and it really scared the hell out of me. And I really couldn't get back into a haunted house until I was probably 14, 15 years old. But uh, I think the first time I ever watched a horror movie, it was, um, it was The Beast Within okay. on HBO. It was uh, like an 80s, 80s movie. And then it just kind of drifted off from there into, uh, you know, Christopher Lee, the old 60s Dracula. That really uh, uh, held, held, held my attention quite a bit. So I really, uh, back in my younger years, was into uh, vampires and okay. werewolves. Very cool. So, I mean, talking about vampires and werewolves and horror movies and stuff like that, how do you feel about the Underworld series? Yeah, it was okay. I mean, you know, uh, you know, growing up in the 60s and 70s, not a lot of CGI yeah. was going on back then. But uh, with CGI getting, getting uh, more attention these days, uh, you know, the makeup effects are amazing still. But uh, some of the CGI, just uh, I, I can't get into it. I understand. Trish is the same way. She's not a big fan of CGI uh, for the most part. So she's, she's old school like that, too. Um, so before we get into, into the full interview, and if, if you've been watching the past few episodes of Talking Scared, um, we've started a new little segment. Um, it's called The Battle of the Five, and it's kind of uh, a little bit for us to get to know each other a little bit more before we dive into this. Um, and what it is? If, you, uh, okay. if you're willing to accept our, our, our little game here, is I'm going to present you five different scenarios, all right? And these are going to be two different um, okay. characters. It can be from horror movies, video games, any genre that I can possibly think of or come up with. And um, we're going to pit these two in a fight to the death. And I've actually got the first two. Um, I've tried to do a copy of it a bit, too. So I thought you might enjoy that a little bit more. So you're doing a play? Okay. Yeah, let me uh let me turn you up here. Something's going on with the audio on your end there. All right. Okay, go ahead. So the very first one we got, we're gonna start off, and, and these are all fights to the death. 
um, somebody's got to walk away victorious and somebody's, well, going to have to be dead. <laughs> so the first one that we got, we want to go with the old school RoboCop, not the remake. I wasn't a fan of it, didn't like it. But old school RoboCop versus the T-100 Terminator. Uh, I would say uh, probably the old school Peter yeah, Weller RoboCop. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that answer. I like that answer. It's a good one. I think the T-100 would definitely do some damage. It'd be a hell of a fight. It'd be a hell of a fight. Yeah, I think it would do some I think it would do some damage, but I think with the uh, with the old school weapons that RoboCop had, I think he would put the Terminator yeah, out of his yeah, misery. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, moving on. I'm excited about this one. I, I hope you like this one. Um, so we have Martin Riggs from Lethal Weapon versus John McClane from Die Hard. Who comes out on top of that one? Uh, let's see. I would have to say, uh, yeah. John from Die Hard. Yeah. Uh, I know right. it just, it, yeah, it's just, I, you know, uh, Martin Riggs, yeah. he's crazy. Um, I'm a fan of the new, I was a fan of the new lethal weapon that was on Fox. Uh, the guy that played that was amazing he, comic, but uh, I would have to say, uh, yeah, definitely Die Hard because of, uh, I think he just had the, uh, the, the balls yeah. and the attitude. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Now this next one, um, I, I hope that you've seen the series. Um, it was on Stars, I believe. It was the Stars or Encore that had it? HBO. HBO? It wasn't HBO. Anyways, so number one, the movie 300. Um, obviously, we know the lead guy there was Leonidas, King Leonidas. Now, Spartacus, um, one of the uh, Roman gladiators that led a huge rebellion in Rome. They had a whole series on him. I believe it was on Encore. Um, but obviously, we know the tale of the warrior. We know the tale of King Leonidas and his 300. So Spartacus up against King Leonidas. Fight to the death. Who you got? I got to go with Spartacus. I watched the entire series. Uh, it was Sorry. on Stars, actually. It was on Stars. And, uh, yeah, the uh, I watched all three seasons that they had of it. And I just think with the way Spartacus was able to uh, – uh, take the slaves, and uh, the slaves were able to get behind him, and him leading the slaves against the kings, and uh, the you know the different uh, uh, people over there. I, th I just think the uh, Spartacus. Yeah. Spartacus was my pick too. You know, I, I there's a lot of people going with King Leonidas, yes. and I, I understand that. Um, I will say some of the gladiator battles from season one, um, just to give a compliment <laughs> to his series, some of the coolest, <laughs> coolest coolest um, battle scenes that I've ever seen. Um, one of the best presentations, and obviously it was over dramatized and stuff like that, but I thought it was one of the coolest presentations, kind of that Roman feel and what the gladiator experience would have been like. Season one, like most best right. TV seasons I've ever watched. It was very, very good. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I, w I think Crixus, uh Crixus probably would have kicked yeah, everybody's ass. Yeah, I think ass. so, too. I would have, I would have liked to see them really actually go at it uh, one no, more time. No, Gatticus was mine. Gatticus, he was, I didn't like Gatticus. He was too, I, I, I don't know. Gatticus. Gatticus, Gatticus, I think, should have yeah, been a hair man. <laughs> I'm with you. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Uh, Crixus' yeah. girlfriend. Um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but I think she would have probably murdered everybody. Crazy bitch. Yeah, um, I, I can't remember I, Kills me. I can't remember her yeah. name offhand. Um, I'm sure it ends with "is" as most of them seem to. <laughs> but um, anyways, moving on to the next one. All right, so we're gonna go with Batman from the Christopher Nolan series, the Dark Knight, Dark Knight Returns, Batman Begins. That series up against Captain America, from the latest Marvel movie, um, uh, Avengers: Endgame, the last one that he was in. Those are the two we got pitted up against each other, fight to the death. Who you got? <laughs> You know, I got to go with Batman. I got I to gotta stick with the, you know, old Christopher Nolan there. I'm sorry, any uh, puny guy they put in a uh, some type of chainer and bring, bring, you know, put in a chamber and bring back as a muscular guy. That's it, it, just too far fetched, man. We just got to yeah. go with Batman. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Um, last one here. Um, so we're gonna go with Chucky from the original Child's Play, not the robotic had to learn how to kill the serial killer possessed Chucky up against Leprechaun from the original Leprechaun, Fight to the Death. Who you got? 
Oh my God, that's that's a tough one there, man. But I would have to go. Uh, I would almost have to go with the leprechaun because I think he would go Conor <laughs> McGregor on his ass and make him tap out. Excuse me. Yes, absolutely. I would love. I have to go you, with the leprechaun. Yes, the leprechaun tapping out Chuck. That would be the the best yes. thing ever. Oh my God. And if that's the case. If we're going to see Chucky <laughs> tap out, then I think it should be the new Chucky, because that's the one that should be tapping out. Yes, so, absolutely. But anyways, yeah, man, Ron, yeah. thanks for playing along, man. We hope that was a little bit of fun. We like to, we, we enjoy it. We enjoy it. And we always yeah. like to see everyone else's answers. And you know what I've noticed? Scurry Face disagrees with almost every answer I ever <laughs> have. Um, so that's cute. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the haunt industry. First off, let's talk about the haunt that you're cur currently working at. Yeah, I work at the uh, Wilmington Haunted Holler Ride, and I, like I said, I've been there uh, s going on 17 years now, and uh, for those 17 years, I've been the, pretty much the same character. For the f first 12 years, I was pretty much a, uh, I had a, uh, it was a clown, uh, didn't really, it was a full latex mask, really didn't uh, do a lot of uh, conversation. He was voiceless, and he pretty much wandered the crowd is what he did and put the fear, <laughs> fear in everybody. And uh, I just, I just kind of got tired of not being able to interact with the crowd, not be able to uh, speak or anything like that. So uh, I kind of brought the character into the future and I actually uh, went with a, uh, a latex appliance, two hours with her makeup. And uh, I've been the uh, same character for about four or five years now, but uh, just a different look. His name Shackles. is Shackles. Cool. We're going to talk about Shackles a good bit this evening. Um, but before we do that, everybody that's watching, if you haven't gone over to the Wilmington Haunted Hollow ride, Facebook page. Check them out. Give them a like. Make sure you're sharing them out as much as you can. Be sharing this out. Let's get some more people up in here. We're about to talk about some really cool things with somebody that's been in this industry for a very long time. And we're even going to see at some point if maybe while he was on duty, he's ran around dressed as shackles because I think that would be really, really cool to get pulled, <laughs> over, pulled over. If you're going to get pulled uh, over, you got to get pulled over by shackles. Um, but anyways, we're going to see. See if maybe there's been some mischief. Um, but anyway, so, uh, Wilmington Hot and Holler, right? Uh, let's talk about it. Somebody that's never been there before, they first step foot there on the grounds, what can they see? Uh, well, what they're going to notice is, uh, I would tell you, because we are a commercial haunt, uh, we are open every, you know, every Friday and Saturday night for seven weeks, uh, starting September 21st. Uh, we want to make sure that we tell everybody who's going to come out, get there early. Uh, because if you get there an hour late, you're going to be staying in line for two to three hours. Because that, I mean, we we, we usually put between 1,500 to 2,500 people a night Damn. through our haunt, and uh, because they just, I mean, they just come from a you know a tri-state area, and you know we've uh, the the haunted hall has been around for 25 plus years in three different locations. Uh, so the queue line does get pretty pretty long uh, very very quickly. Uh, but we do have three attractions. Uh, we are, um, of course, known for the Hana Hollow Ride itself. Uh, what that is, they take a school bus. They basically chop the top off of the school bus. Uh, we put about 40 to 50 people uh, on the bus, and we take them through about a 25-minute ride back that into is, hell. Man, that is so cool. That is very cool. All right, and, then, and then the other two attractions? Uh, the other two yeah, we have two inside attractions. One is called the okay. Slaughter Hotel, and the other one is called the Evil Asylum. And uh, I can't really, uh, you know, uh, go too much into detail. I do know there's been some rebuilding process going on the last uh, the last four or five months on uh, on the yeah. not for seven. We have to change it up for customers. They just don't want to see the same thing. So we want to make sure that we're bringing customers back. And uh, we hope to, you know, with, uh, with the Haunted Hollow Ride, everybody knows it's the fire-breathing semis that brings them, uh, brings them to our haunt because everybody loves to see those uh, semis. So I'm just trying to think how insanely difficult it would be to run a, a, a chopped-off school bus with all these different people in it. You're trying to keep it safe on top of everything else. Man, what are some of the challenges of trying to run a haunt like that where that's your primary beast? The first challenge, of course, is weather. 
Uh, the, the, you know, if we get if we get heavy rain, we do of course have to shut down because of safety. Because first of all, safety is a, our first priority for not only our staff but for our patrons who come out as well. So we want to make sure it's safe for everybody. Another thing that we do as well, we always have security on the bus as well. It's just you know other employees that we bring in. They're not armed security. They're just there to make sure everybody's having a good time, everybody's staying safe. Uh, if they happen to see something that that is. Uh, pretty bad. They'll, they'll let the driver know. We'll, the driver will stop and we'll let the owners know. We, of course, we do have uh, uh, deputies there uh, from our local sheriff's department that will be waiting for the uh, troublemakers uh, to get them off the you. bus. Um, you have a lot of trouble with that? I mean, a lot of different people that, that, that get in there just to just to stir up trouble or? You know, not not really on, on the bus ride too much. Um, you know, we've had to take phones from people because, you know, we, we do give them uh, instructions up front not to be taking photos, don't be touching the actors, anything like that. Uh, there's been a few times where we've actually uh, had people throw things at our some of our actors. And our actors do get on and off the bus. They get on the side of the bus, and they'll actually slide up and down the sides of the bus as well. Uh, we've had uh, one time when I was on there riding along as a character, we did have one guy, uh, one of our actors, get pushed Ooh. off the bus. So uh, needless to say, that guy yeah. had to be arrested, yeah, of course, because uh, of the situation. We're just lucky there's no serious injury yeah. that day. Um, so that, 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 that sucks that you got to deal with stuff like that. But um, it's so cool, the, the concept of, of having it be kind of like a theme park ride and everything like that. And I mean, that's 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 – to me, at least, it's very original. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to go to one like that. The only other one that I've heard of like that, I think, is the Haunted Hydra that, that has anything even similar to that. And that's that's such a cool concept, man. Um, now, what exactly is your role um, right now with the Haunt? Uh, with the Haunt, basically, uh, you know, like I said, I've been with them 17 years. In the past probably dozen years, I've been helping with, like, uh, uh, character yeah. creation, um, some of the application process, hiring process, um, placing actors in their scenes, helping with auditions to figure out what they're going to do. And we also do some uh, motivational stuff. You know, we make sure that everybody that comes out it has a good time. And uh, pretty much, uh, you know, if they have an issue, they uh, always come up and say, hey, Shackles, this is what's going on. I'm like, hey. You know, I'm off duty. This is shackles. If you need any officers, go find the deputies. Yeah, very cool. Um, so let's let's talk about character development. And let's talk about shackles. Um, that is that's your primary guy. Um, and uh, let's let's talk about yep. kind of the the birth, the beginning of shackles. How did shackles come to be? Well, to be honest with you, uh, you know, when I went to a haunt one time, I you know, this is probably 20 years ago. I just saw the reaction that people were getting from clowns. And uh, I myself was never afraid of clowns, but I just kind of sat back and watched reactions. And, I, you know, you get some people that laugh, and then you get some people don't even want anybody to stare at them that's in a, in a clown mask. Uh, so I did find, yeah, I did find a mask online that kind of was like kind of freaky about 18, 19 years ago. And uh, I wore it for, like I said, the, the last uh, 12 or so years. And uh, that's how Shackles was pretty much uh, uh, created. Um, but Shackles, to me, I didn't consider him a clown. Um, in my thought process, uh, Shackles, uh, um, he was uh, basically, he, he was a serial killer. Um, there's a backstory to him that, uh, you know, he wandered uh, college campuses across the state of Ohio. And uh, the cops stopped him one night on a country road, and he had three three uh, sorority sisters' heads in his uh, pillowcase uh, as, his award, as his reward, as his trophies. And he'd served time, he served time in the mental ward, and he escaped it, and he's been uh, traveling the state that of Ohio ever cool. since. That's, um, I don't know how, how much you follow serial killers or not, but he, he reminds me of a little bit of Ed Kemper. Yeah. That, sounds, um, that sounds very Ed Kemper-ish. Um, he would definitely have probably had some heads in the trunk. Um, any inspiration for, for that backstory from any – Real life serial killers, or just just the thought process of what Shackles was? Yeah, it was just the thought process, and as part of you know, as part of the uh, uh, costume, uh, you know, I, I do wear the uh, the uh, orange jumpsuit with the uh, mental ward uh, uh, items all over it. I also actually have um, 
a shackled neck where the shackles hang off to my neck that looks like I've been basically four point harnessed in with chains. I actually wear chains uh, uh, and uh, harnesses ar around my wrist and uh, I've even thought about putting some on my ankles, uh, but that's kind of hard to do when you're chasing. Yeah, that would, I think field. that would open up a whole new list of challenges maybe. Uh, maybe you haven't even been presented with in 17 years trying to run while your ankles are shackled. That'd be impressive if you pulled it off, though. Um, that would be very Absolutely. impressive. Yeah, but, yeah, but the shack, I, I kind of created my own shackles where they're breakaway, um, which also adds to the uh, intensity of uh, uh, the fear factor of people because they think that old shackles is shackled up, and when I'm able to break my own chains, it kind of freaks them out Absolutely. quite a bit. That's, that's very cool. So talking about character development a little bit, um, how how difficult is it to kind of figure out what character is going to work right for what actor or actress? And kind of what's the process of matching people up with that? You know, well, what we do, I mean, we've got so many scenes there at the Wilmington Han and Holler Ride. And what we try to do when we audition actors, we tell, uh, these, especially the new people, that, uh, you know, the, the owners build the scenes. It's uh, the actors that bring those scenes to life. And I tell the person, I, I'm like, listen, you're not who you think you are right now. You're going to, we're going to make you think outside of the box. We want you to bring this scene alive. So we actually take that person for the audition. We take them to a scene and we say, we want you to bring this scene alive and to think outside the box. And, uh, you know, I would say probably 60% of the people we bring in will actually do a decent job, uh, but the other smaller percentage, we actually have to maybe script a little bit for them and uh, give them some words of advice to say, okay, this isn't going to work, but this will. Try to say these words or use your body language. And that's what we try to come across when it's character development, because there's some people that come out that can't use their voice. They, they, they can't really scare people. So we kind of like, okay, if you can't scare people, let's you know, try the old jump scare. Let's try uh, body movements things like that, because not everybody's cut out to have a speaking part. In a, in yeah, absolutely. A absolutely. So I'm, I'm sure over the years you have seen some um, ridiculous auditions. Um, you've had to have. Um, is, there, is there a particular one you yes, look sir. back on that you want to share? Well, obviously not mentioning any names or anything, but of um, one that, that still makes you laugh to this day. Yeah, we, a we actually had, um, you know, uh, lady come out and she was supposed to be in our uh, hotel because we have a, it's a we almost have it's almost like a mirror maze inside there but uh we, we told her he, we wanted her to be scary and wondering like almost like a uh, old uh uh demented bride type of uh character so she shows up in a sexy oh. maid outfit and we pretty much we pretty much had to tell her uh uh more scary yeah. less sexy uh so, number one, I want to I want to thank you for your service as a police officer. Um, that's that's a uh, oh, thank you, sir. That's not an easy job. Um, I can't even begin to imagine or pretend to imagine some of the crazy nonsense you have to deal with on a day to day basis. But I wanted to talk to you about it for for a few minutes, and you know, we always like to get to know the person behind the mask. I think we've gotten to know Shackles a little bit. Um, I want to get to know Ron a little bit now. Um, so looking back. Sure. At all your time as a police officer, number one, and I think the most important question I have, it's have you ever been tempted to throw on the shackles mask when you pull somebody over for just like a minor traffic violation and then all of a sudden shackles is walking up? Not even. Not even one. No, I, I've never, never really had to do that. But I, I will tell you, we actually have um, the past couple years, we've had what's called the Villain Fest in, in our city here in Wilmington which basically uh, starts about a month before the haunts open up where we kind of bring in and do a zombie walk. But uh, we kind of, we shut the roads down for a parade. And uh, because I am a supervisor there at the police department, I was shackles and I was in full gear and shackles. And I actually jumped in one of the cruisers and drove one of the cruisers from intersection okay. to intersection. And everybody got pictures about shackles. Everybody got pictures and videos about Shackles of Clowns. That is so cool. Car. That's so cool, man. That's awesome that you guys were playing around like that. I, man, I'd love to see that. that we have to hunt that video down. We have to see that at some point. Yeah, I, th I think I've got it somewhere. I'll send it to you. I'd love to see that. Thank you, man. Yeah, that's so cool. So, again, 27 years in law enforcement. 
what is probably the craziest, most ridiculous scene you've ever walked up to? One that just made you just sit there, just wow, man, what what the hell? In in a funny way, not 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 in a well, not in a horrible way. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of times, you know, we deal with uh, law enforcement deals with a lot of people with, of course, mental mental issues. And, uh, you know, not to make light of anybody's mental issues, but, the, you know, there's some times where you just sit back and you want to get them the help that yeah. they need, of course. But uh, I was probably, you know, I was maybe one or two years on the job uh, and uh, we went to a call and uh, this lady, she actually had this uh, statue of a frog that was sitting in her corner of her apartment and it had a blue backpack on. And she was talking to the frog. I didn't even know the statue was there. And she was complaining that the frog, you know, stole her money. And it was, she wanted me to check the blue backpack and all this other stuff. And, of course, there, there is the statue in the corner. I'm like, uh, I don't think he's going anywhere, ma'am. You can go check him yourself. So it's just, you know, simple things like that. Uh, you know, we, we, and we kind of have, you have to have fun. You have to have a sense of humor as a police officer. Because if you don't have a sense of humor as a police officer, the job can eat away at you. And it causes burnout. Uh, and we see a lot of, uh, unfortunately, we see a lot of uh, officers uh, that we lose more officers a, a, a year during uh, for suicides than we do for uh, line of duty deaths. So uh, we just had, you know, that's what I tell my fellow officers getting a job. You have to have a sense of humor to work yeah. this profession. Yeah, as hard as it is, probably have to be able to let the day go whenever you get home as, as best as you can as well and not not carry that with you all the time. And I'm sure much easier said than done, though. Um, so why law enforcement, man? What got you into law enforcement? Well, my, my grandfather, he was a uh, deputy in, in Brown County, Ohio, for over 47 years. Um, just, you know, growing up and watching him put the uniform on, I had so much respect for the profession. Um, he, he was even an auxiliary officer uh, up until the day he passed away. He was actually getting ready to go to a prisoner transport, putting his uh, uniform on the day they actually had a heart attack. So it, it was him and, you know, it runs in the family. Uh, you know, I was the first one uh, of the grandsons to go into law enforcement. And then two of my cousins are actually state troopers here in the state of Ohio. All right. Very cool. Um, now, this, this last question, um, I want you to feel free not to answer it if you don't feel comfortable with it for whatever reason. Um, but we are all about horror. We're all about the scare a little bit. And I am sure that sometime in 27 years, there has been a moment um, that was probably a pretty scary moment for you. Um, looking back, is there a moment like that that you'd want to share that was one of your scarier moments as a police officer? Yeah, there. you know, we had back in 1997, uh, I was canine officer back then, and there was a situation where we had a actual, there was a shootout uh, that we had in our city, uh, pretty national known incident that occurred, it was the Kehoe brothers, they were uh, two uh, white supremacists came through town, a simple traffic stop turned into a shootout with a state trooper and one of our local deputies here. And I was called out uh, to do a track after they had fled the area on foot. And when I turned my radio on to put my uh, jumpsuit on and to grab my canine, I could actually hear one of our officers being fired on with automatic fire from the rifle. And knowing that we were going out there trying to track these bad guys down, uh, being outgunned uh, because they had the high powered rifles and the ARs, things like that. And, you know, just being, knowing that we could be shot at and taken, you know, taken away from our families at any time. And that same year, we were actually, uh, had, we had a, uh, a little convenience store robbery here in the city. And we uh, tracked a guy with a canine and he had, we actually had fired at a couple of officers. And I was actually there when that occurred and I could not release my canine because there were people scattering everywhere. So that, that's the scariest part yeah, of knowing you're I'm out there. Sure, I'm sure. Um, and again, uh, sincerely, thank you so much for your service. That is uh, not an easy job. I'm sure it's a very rewarding job at times, but definitely, definitely not an easy job. And um, now let's let's jump back into a different form of scaring. Let's talk about your favorite time sure. um, that you scared somebody um, inside of a haunted house. And uh, your favorite, the one you look back on and you're like, ah, that was the one I sent back crying to their mommy. Oh, man, that's, that is so, you know, that is so funny because... Uh, because I worked the queue line there at the, at the haunt, and just being able to, you know, watch people's reactions when they spot me for the first time, I can tell who I really get and follow and jump on the bus with them. And the funniest thing is when I 
find them, I kind of hide back a little bit. And when they get on the bus, I kind of get behind them without them knowing I'm there. And then I'll jump like six foot in the air and land in the seat right in front of them. And I'll ride the entire bus ride either behind them, in front of them, or beside them until we get to the very end. And I don't say a word to them until we get to the very end when they're getting ready to get off. And I'll lean over and I'll actually, there's a little saying that I have, and I'll say, hey, guess what? When you go home tonight, you got to go to bed, right? When you go to bed, you got to go to sleep. When you sleep, you got to dream. Guess who's going to be there? And then I scream right in their face, me. And that's all they can think about is, you know, that when, when they dream, Shackles is going to be right there with them. So, but yeah, I've had people urinate in their wow. seats before. Um, uh, most of the time it's females, you know, that, that urinate in their seats. And I've had, I've had, you know, uh, male, males be afraid of me as well, but uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's a good time because I prey on them, uh, you know, just, just a little click of the turn of the head and just, staring at them without saying anything it, that's fear within itself and i pray on that that's all night awesome. long. i love how i love how you talk about it, how you talk about preying on people's fear and everything else that's that 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 shows that intensity and that love for it and that passion for it it's not just a it's not just a job man this is what you live for is to get that scared yeah i mean it's a it's passion. It became a hobby for me. Uh, I, you know, I volunteered for about one or two years at a local haunt here before going to the Haunted Hollow. And uh, I just, you know, I, I'm building the character up and, you know, I, I've, you know, received so many fans over the past four or five years via Facebook and Instagram. And what's great is, I mean, we're known as a family haunt there. So, you know, yeah, we try to scare people, but, you know, when it, we, we see people bring toddlers in to the haunt, you know, two, three years of of age and you know we, we take pictures with them we try not to scare them and it was great because we had uh, uh, mayhem who is my son uh he works at the house and he has an autistic kid come out every year to take pictures and and every year my son gives him his vest that has, says mayhem on the back of it and it just lights that young man's day up and i had a his sister actually wrote i think she was fourth or fifth grade wrote a composition about uh, shackles about being her you know supposedly her hero you know when you when you take a horror clown and it's somebody's hero that says a lot for what we do at the Wilmington Haunted Yes it Hollywood. does and um and speaking of your son we're going to be having him on for Talking Scared of next season um so we'll be able to get to know Mayhem uh, a good bit as well um so that we're very excited about that one too um so but anyways there talking about the haunt a little bit more we always like to ask it seems a lot of these places have a genuine haunted backstory to them. Um, a lot of the haunted attractions we've been to, they always seem to have that, that, that real story or that real paranormal experience. Do you yourself um, believe, believe that this place is genuinely haunted? Uh, no, not, not this place in particular. There are, I mean, we do, of course, every haunt has their own backstory with uh, the different attractions that they have. With the Slaughter Hotel, we have Dr. Slaughter. Uh, with the evil asylum, we have the, the warden who went crazy and tested on his subjects. And, you know, with uh, when the hollow started several years ago, it was with Farmer Dave. And Farmer Dave, you know, was uh, when he took the patrons back, they, he, he would come back alone. They would never come back on the bus or anything. So, But as far as any supernatural or uh, uh, experiences I've had there, really, okay. I haven't had any. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Nice. We get a lot of mixed answers on that one. There's some people, like we had one guy, um, we, we still call it the toilet brush incident. They got scared by a, a paranormal toilet brush. Um, we talked to him on the beginning of the season, and we've had <laughs> others that just, nah, nah, haven't, haven't had anything happen. So it's always cool just to kind of see different feelings on it. Um, so do you have a haunted house that you like to go to, um, other than the one that you, you work for? But is there a particular one you like to go to when you want to get your scare off? You know, it, I'm glad you asked that because there, you know, we don't get a lot of downtime mm -hmm. to do this, uh, go to other haunts when we're in season. Uh, we actually got rained out one time last year. And of course, uh, you know, shackles, it takes him two hours to get his makeup on, about an hour and a half to take it off. So we all decided as a group, we were going to head up to the uh, Lewisburg Haunted Cave up in Lewisburg, Ohio, which is a little bit northwest of Dayton, Ohio. And uh, I'm telling you what, uh, as far as, you know, being underground in an, in an old limestone cave, that 
was probably one of the best experiences I've had inside a haunt because uh, you're down there for about 45 minutes just inside the haunt itself. And they've got so many scenes. Of course, you know, with natural limestone, they're able to do a lot uh, at that haunt. And I was very, very cool. impressed. With very cool. Um, that's, that's awesome. I like the idea of the yeah. haunt inside of a cave, man. That's, that's very cool. It's very cool. Um, uh, if you have your chance, I, I highly cool. suggest cool. it. We will, we will absolutely want to try and try and add that to the, to the ever, the ever growing list. It feels like the list gets bigger it just every, depends. every it single day. Chilly. Um, but uh, anyways, we're, we're getting close to wrapping it up here. But before we do, um, again, something we talk about with every single guest, we are big into immersive horror and immersive theater and that hands-on contact, that, that simulated walking through a horror movie type of haunt. And there's no doubt in anyone's mind, I believe, that the traditional walkthrough haunt will always be king. Um, but immersive horror is definitely taking its seat beside it. And um, just want to know, honest opinions. Um, what are your thoughts, number one, on that genre? It, it is a growing industry. I know that because uh, every single day you see dip, uh, new, new ones opening up. Uh, there, there's a new one opening up in uh, actually the Los Angeles area. I think it's called the, uh, uh, the, I think it's like the Haunted Museum or something like that. They do do an immersive haunt out there, and they're advertising it big time now on Facebook. But uh, you know, it's not for everybody. Uh, I understand. You know, I know we had, you had guests on that talked about McCammy Manor, and I'm not. I'm going to push that to the side because I'm yeah, with we, you we, on we, it. I, that, we don't that's support not, those. <laughs> that's just a, yeah, that's just abuse. So, but, uh, you know, I think with immersive theater, as long as the theme uh, uh, is what draws attraction to them, and I think, it, you know, if that person goes out and says, yeah, this theme is something that I want to personally uh, encounter, I, th I think it's probably going to be, a, 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 continue to be a growing is industry. something you would ever consider trying yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. As, as, as a customer. I don't know if we would ever do something like that uh, awesome, with awesome. our and I love the open-mindedness and the willing to try that. And I, I do want to make it clear um, with McCamey Manor, being that it's been brought up. Uh, McCamey Manor is not considered a haunt within the haunt community. Neither do we. Yeah, we don't we don't support them in any way, shape, or form. We have had guests that's brought it up and, and talked about it. And um, the the one that we had that we really enjoyed. So we had somebody that actually worked. Um, with Russ McCamey for a little bit, and then she actually parted ways with me when she found he, out um, a lot about it. And you know, and that's what he does and who he is is something we don't want any part of. And while we, so it's been mentioned, it, it's I, not for. I, yeah, it's, I it's totally agree with you. Again, to each their own. Yeah, because that, that's just nothing that we want to have anything to do with. That's that's just I, I don't even know what to call that. It just seems like absolute just pointless torture, <laughs> um, personally. It's, 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 yeah, it's abuse. It's abuse. It's, it's bullshit. It's not a haunt. It's scare tactics. They're, they're preying on people. They're actually just preying on people just to, just for the torture factor. You know, like I said, haunts, uh, immersive haunts, things like that. Uh, psychological fear uh, can be done the right way. What he does is torture and abuse. So it, it's, it, it, immerse, the immersive theater, uh, what you get, what you guys have been to, that's, that's what I want to, want to try as well as the, the immersive haunt, uh, just to go through some of the it's, psychological. It's such a cool theory. experience. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it's very empowering it. to get through. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that was the coolest part about it. There's, there's things inside that, you know, when you're first presented with it, you're just like, ah, oh, man, there's no way there, there's no way I'm going to be able to, to walk through this or do this. And then when you just, it, it's, it's getting that control of your body. It's when that fight or flight instinct kicks in and you're able to subdue it that that's when it becomes rewarding and makes it feel like, you know, there's, there's a lot of problems in this world that, that really aren't that bad. If I can just approach it the same way, calm down, think about it, work your way through it. And it's, it's very rewarding. Um, again, not for everyone, not for everyone in any way, shape or form, um, but very, very cool experience. And we highly recommend them to just about anybody. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons I want to do it is because, you know, being a law enforcement, I've seen a lot of things, been, you know, um, uh, so nothing really scares me, so to speak. I, I do hate spiders. I, I arachnophobia big time. You couldn't have said but, that you know, because just we, being a, we have artists and creators that watch. 
And if you go to one, now that they know that you're scared of spiders, you could have got yourself in some trouble. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, like I said, I just, I just, as a law enforcement officer, I'm, I, you know, there's really no fear. You're not supposed to show any fear. I think I've gotten onto a few things over the years, and uh, I think an immersive haunt. I just, I think it would test my yeah, probably absolutely. ability. Very cool, man. And again, I love the open mindedness. I love the, the wanting to push the envelope and see what else is out there, man. That's so cool. Um, well, before we let you go, man, we're going to turn the floor over to you. Let you get any last little minute shameless plugs you want to get in. Any shout outs, any thank yous to absolutely anybody out there in that world or anything that you want to say whatsoever. Ron, thank you so much for being with us tonight. The floor is yours, man. All right. All right. For all my scare crew and the crew there at the hollow, hey, thanks for having me for all these 17 years. I continue to be there. You're probably going to have to take shackles out uh, on a stretcher because I plan on okay. doing this for a while. I, I want to thank Dave and Sandy for uh, owning the haunt, do what they do, can with the haunt. Uh, and, of course, my son, Mayhem, uh, Giggles, and uh, Sister Death, and s most of the other actors there at the Hollow. We appreciate it. Everybody who's a Hollow fan, come on out, because you're going to see some new things this year. Uh, Shackles is probably going to uh, – he may have a new face very this year, cool. and you never very know. Very cool. Very exciting. Very exciting. All right, man. Um, well, again – Thank you so much for, for hanging out with us a little bit tonight. Go kick some ass this hot season. It's coming right around the corner. Ah, I'm pumped. I'm ready. Absolutely. Yeah, but I'm ready weeks for us. Yep. Ron, man, thank you so much. Um, hopefully, we'll probably be seeing you at some point. We haven't finalized our list yet, and you're you're in our vicinity. Um, so we're, we're planning on hitting up in Ohio pretty hard. So we'll see. I don't I don't know. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but it's a it's good possibility. You might see us sneak up in yeah, there. I think you guys said you were going to try to come up to Brimstone. And if you come up to Brimstone, we're only about 20 well, minutes Well, I guess that's confirmation right there because yeah. we, have, we are definitely going to Brimstone. There's, there's no doubt about that. So, Ron, we're going to be seeing you, man. We're going to be seeing you. You and Shackles. All right, Thank brother. you again for being with us tonight, man. You have a good night. All right. And uh, what is an awesome, awesome guy. Um, for everybody out there still watching, man, throw up some hearts, throw up some likes for Ron, man. What a phenomenal And just overall, great, great guy. Um, really, really enjoyed that. And so on point with the transition. So flawless. Perfect. I was so impressed. Perfect. So impressed. Um, but anyways, um, thank you all so much, those of you that did hang out and did hang out with us for a little bit tonight. Again, another last final thank you to Ron. Um, we are finalizing. Our haunt list, obviously, we're going to be heading up there. <laughs> um, one thing that we do have for sure that's final is we will be heading up to Wells Township for their um, opening night, uh, which will be September 13th, right? I got that yes. right, Friday the 13th. Uh, that's where we're going to be. We are going to be at Wells Township. We've already spoken with them, working out a few more things with them, um, hanging out, uh, hammering out a few more details and making sure everything's set up and ready to roll. But going to try to have a really, really killer night. And I think that that's going to be our primary focus that evening. Uh, I think we're going to spend a good bit of time um, there. At least that's the idea. But we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. And they're not so much of a lot of interaction. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully have, some, have a rock band to show you possibly. and All types of cool stuff. Um, tomorrow night, we are going to be on Science Behind the Scare. And uh, that's, that's diving into the hows and whys of haunting. That's going to be with Nick. We're going to be talking to him about Science Behind the Scare. He's going to be talking to us about uh, us, I think. I think something like that. So we're going to be on there tomorrow night. Make sure you check that out. Fantasy football. Um, we're going to do the – we got the final pick in here, right? So we're going to make – we're going to grab the last pick here, see who the last person is going to be able to join, and then we are going to send out all the invites. Some of you have already gotten them. If you've gotten them, please, please go ahead and register. Get your team set up, all that good stuff. Um, but uh, – if you haven't, we'll be sending out all the invites. I'll be re uh, setting up a Grace uh, uh, bleh, Facebook messaging group page with everybody on it. Yeah, I got this shit. <laughs> um, Facebook messaging group page. That way everybody can communicate together and all that good stuff. And let's see, uh, Ron is also going to be in it. Very cool, right? Oh, I was trying to unfold it. For real? Guess who the final member of the fantasy football team is? And I don't think he may, show it. he may not have even realized what he was doing when oh, he did it. Oh, I know who it I is. I don't then. think he realized what he was doing, but I'm going to hold him to it. Mr. Mike Ross, 
Mr. Gravedigger, right there. There it is. You can see it. It's probably backwards, and I don't even care. You know what it says. Okay. Gravedigger. I don't care. I don't care if you know everything about football. I don't care if you don't know nothing about football. You're playing. You're going to play. <laughs> you're going to be in this. Yeah. Yes. That is Ah, that's so cool. He obeyed the contest real solid. He did. He did, man. Didn't even realize what he was doing, probably. <laughs> I'm going to have to personal message him here in just a minute and be like, guess what you just did? So, anyways, that's it. That's it. We're done. We're going to have our final list out very shortly as to all the haunts and places that we're going to be hitting up. Again, thank you all. Season finale's next week. Make sure you tune in Sunday, Monday. Bye.